Hello, welcome. Try this problem out and then press play when you're ready to solve it together. Okay, so they tell us the zeros for this function, we have a fourth degree polynomial here, right? Highest degree is four, or which of the following. So I'm gonna solve this in two ways. Uh, let's first solve it algebraically. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna factor by grouping. I'm gonna factor by grouping. I find the algebraic techniques the most satisfying, but the other way we'll solve it is by graphing and uh, we'll use the calculator for that. So you'll see it from two perspectives, and then you can decide which one you like. So here, what I would do is I would just kind of write it out. x to the fourth minus four x cubed minus nine x squared plus 36 x. And then I look at this and I say, okay, well, this is my first binomial, this is my second. Can I factor this out in some way? In the first binomial, the highest thing I've got is x cubed. So factor that out. x cubed times x is x to the fourth minus four because x cubed times four is four x cubed. Then what I'm gonna factor out is in the second term, the highest thing I could factor out, and I, I just always pick the highest um, factor, com highest common factor, and see if that works. And I get x, and then I'm gonna get minus four. Right, because negative 9x times negative 4 is positive 36x. And when I look at this, I notice, okay, this term right here has a factor of x minus 4, and so does this. So I can rewrite it as x cubed minus 9x, that binomial, times its common factor. And you can kind of see if I redistributed this x minus 4 to x cubed, I get this term. And x minus 4 times this term will get me this piece right here. Now, this can be factored further because um, I've got x as a common factor. So x times x squared minus 9 and times x minus 4, but there's more. What else do we have here? Difference of squares. Always be on the lookout for the difference of squares. Um, this comes up so frequently. So we have x and then this is going to factor to x minus 3, difference of squares, and x plus 3. And then finally, x minus 4. Now, if we want to find when this is equal to 0, those are the zeros, we think, what are all the cases where this would equal 0? Well, the first one is where x could equal 0. Notice that's in every single choice. Then it could be plus 3, right? If x is a positive 3 here, the whole thing is 0. Or minus 3. Okay, so i got to cross this out here and here. And then plus 4, choice 1. So that's an algebraic way of solving it. Now let's just say I've definitely seen problems where the algebraic approach would be very unreasonable. Um, so another approach is to use the graphing calculator. And what we want to do here, I'm going to clear off some old stuff, is just enter in the polynomial. So that was, let's see, x to the fourth power of four minus four x to the power of three minus nine x squared, we're getting there, and then plus 36x. And I think I've got, okay, so now if we graph this thing, let's just see what happens. Okay, so I have an old window up here. So right now it's running. I'm going to, okay, it stopped. So I'm going to hit zoom, and then I usually do zoom standard just to get a sense if that helps me or not. Let's see what happens. Okay. Well, okay. So this, 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 and these are all zeros on the function. A zero in a graph, of course, is when it crosses the x-axis. So another way to think about this, you can find this in the table if you want to look for friendly values. Let's do that. So here, okay, I'm pretty far in the table, so let's just go to second window. That'll give me table set. I don't want to start at 39. Let me start at zero. And then I go back to the table. Okay, so you can see one of the zeros is at zero, another is at three, another is at four, but if we go back, we see another zero there. Now, the, the problem with just using the table is you're not sure where to look, and that's where the graph comes into play. <coughs> Excuse me. And, well, as I say, multiple choice question, you can make some inferences, but let's just say I'll do one of them here. You want to know a zero, so how do you do that in the graph? Well, you hit second, trace, and the very second thing here, I almost said first thing. So the very first thing is zero. So now it's going to ask me for a point to the left, essentially, of my zero. And it's kind of hard to see, right? I'm like, all right, well, um, let me just go over here. Keep scrolling, because you can scroll along. So this is to the left of one of my zeros. Well, a little bit closer. 
and it looks good. And I can tell I'm above the zero because the y value is above zero. Hit enter, then go to the right of that point, enter, and then I don't bother with guess, guessing. I just hit again, and then there's there's one of my zeros. And you could just do this throughout uh, the graph. So that's, that's an approach using a graphing calculator, which is sometimes necessary on the regions. All right, hope that helps.